what he said, son. You better listen to what I say. These are the things some of us gotta go through. Pretty sad statement on today's world when it's falling on me to give a lesson on responsibility. I mean, what's the world coming to? That's why I've got a guest speaker. Hi, Mom. So here we are at the Black Bull in Bolton. Yes, beautiful Sunday. With Vartan. And oh, Rob. Hello, Vartan. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. How are you? That's good. I'm great. Thank you for asking. Recently, I was reading on the internet uh, about uh, the Free Man Movement. You're familiar with the Free Man Movement? Free Man on the Land and all that stuff? Yes, I am. And you're, uh, do you consider yourself to be a responsible human being? I would like to think so. You, might. you consider yourself to be a responsible man? I hope so. Do you have a, uh, you operate your own business? Yes. Um, and you're married, you, you have a wife? Married, got a wife. Uh, and you have two kids, I understand? Two four-legged kids, yes. Two four-legged children? They're dogs? Yes, they are. Um, I was reading recently on the forum about a guy who wanted to help his brother who had eight DUIs. Yes. And uh, when we were putting on the show in Bolton, you yourself uh, told me about a guy who uh, stated that he was charged with drunk driving and he wanted to use this free man knowledge to avoid that. Yeah. And then you expressed opinions about that. I sure did. Would you share those opinions again? I can try. Okay. Uh, I think that was very, very wrong. Um, being a free man to me is all about responsibility. Taking responsibility for your own actions. And if you're going to go around driving drunk, swerving all over the place, spinning out, ending up in the parking lot, and then civilians keep you there until the police arrive. What happened? Tell us the whole story. Well, this I got this kind of second hand, so I'm not going to name any names because I haven't confirmed myself. But the story goes that the individual was uh, was drunk. He admits this. He was driving down the road. He was swerving, and then he finally spun out. He ended up inside a parking lot didn't hurt anybody but there were other people there and they kept him from leaving until the police arrived and he was a little bit perturbed at that I hear and he was looking to use the, the free man movement and the knowledge they're in to get away from it and I find that very very wrong you know, uh, I don't know what he's planning to do maybe see that they charge the person and say he's not the person he's a human being I don't know. So you see that there's a potential for people to use this information in a, in a harmful manner. Yes. When I first started at the uh, theory that I had it, I felt it was like teaching a five-year-old how to take a safety off a gun. And if you don't teach them how dangerous that gun can be, teaching yes. them how to remove the safety is a pretty stupid thing to do. Very stupid. Um, how then do we address, how do, how do we make sure that uh, this doesn't happen then? Uh, what uh, what are your suggestions for remedy to ensure that uh, people who become free men are responsible? When I first heard of the free man movement, I thought, this is great because going through the process and learning about it, you should naturally discover what, uh, what it's all about. It's all about duties and responsibilities. Do you agree that rights and freedoms stem from the fulfillment of duties and responsibilities? Yes, I do. Um, so, do you believe that people who are irresponsible now, if they go through this process, they will develop in a, a greater degree of responsibility? I think what I'm seeing is that people are... Uh, not really going through the process. There are others that are speeding along their journey and they're not actually doing their own research, and 
relying on what they're told from others. And if you don't do your own research, you're really not going to discover the responsibility in the duty section of it. Right. So, I think maybe you should have some kind of guidelines and a study package, what steps to take, you know, what to study, what to look at, so that people can discover their responsibilities. Otherwise, you know, you, you get someone who comes in like that and hears you can get away from, from doing things, but he hasn't really studied into it. He's just heard about it and he gets the information just handed to him on a platter. That's, so he that's very much growing. like giving a, a child a loaded gun. What about greed? Do you see people in the free man movement uh, trying to rely on it to avoid lawful debts and obligations? Actually, yeah. I saw something else on uh, Think Free Forum uh, just yesterday. Yesterday or the day before. Some guy posted that he actually <coughs> received a real bill from a lawyer over there. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you mentioned that he finally got a real bill. It had all the characteristics of the bill. And now he was looking to accept it for value. And he mentioned in there that it was for a something like a down payment for a loan for a purchase of a product. I mean, you bought something, you know, you should, uh, you should pay for it. Um, I would question if you got a loan previous to learning any of this, if you bought stuff and took loans out or used your credit card, and then you found out that uh, banks or credit cards just create the money, you may have not have borrowed it. So in that case, there could be some justifiable cause for trying to write that off somehow. But it comes back to responsibility again. I mean, you got to be true to yourself, I guess. You know, you're only cheating yourself in the end. So if you need, if you didn't know any of this before, you took out loans, maybe. Would you have taken out the loan if you knew that the banks just created the money? If the answer is yes, then you should probably pay for it. I'm of the opinion that the accepted for value, we can do that for things that are recognized as human rights. Uh, things like food, shelter, um, uh, education, health care, things like that. But frivolous spending, like, uh, I don't know, lap dances at a strip club, uh, I, I don't see how we can lawfully accept for value exactly. things like that. And this guy didn't seem to mention what it is that he purchased, that was 300 and something dollars or somewhere in that effect. It sounded like a product. I don't know what kind of product you're buying that you want to write off that would be essential to life. So you accept I that mean, they have an obligation to provide a bill before you pay them, but if they do present a bill and they did provide you with services or, or products uh, and that they have fulfilled their end of the contract, you would honor that contract by paying the bill. Absolutely. Absolutely. The only thing I have a question with is, uh, like I said, loans. Because, I mean, that money really was created in thin air to begin with. But the question would become, would you have borrowed if you knew that from the get-go with the idea of writing it off later for accepting the value or whatever? And I think that's wrong. But if you're doing that for the purpose of, say, your education or fulfilling one of your rights? Uh, education, I would say that would be good to go because that's going to benefit you and your community. So you distinguish between things that are strictly beneficial to you or luxuries to you yeah. and things that are uh, necessary for your survival and that benefit you and your society or community. Now, responsibility really is responsibility, an ability to respond properly. It's not a reaction. The difference between a reaction and a response, if you poke me with a pin and I say, ouch, that's a reaction. If you poke me with a pin and I say, dude, you do that again, I'm going to charge you with assault, that's a response. Responsibility means you have accepted the liability and that you are able to respond properly. True responsibility is really a function of freedom. If you want to learn how to be free, you have to accept the highest level of responsibility you can. Freedom and responsibility go hand in hand and that's why so many people uh, fear freedom so much. 
It's a matter of looking in and not without. If you want power over your future, you have to accept you have been fully and completely responsible for your present. There is no outside group that you can point to and claim it's them and try to shift responsibility to them and then claim that you have authority over your reality. Accepting responsibility, most people will try to avoid it because it can lead to blame and they think that that is a bad thing because then there's punishment associated with it. But if you simply look at it as a growth process of life, then you start seeing that mistakes, there's, there's really no mistakes. You trip, you fall, you get up, you clean yourself off, you carry on, and you say, yeah, I'm responsible. Accepting responsibility for your now will allow you to create your future because then you start accepting responsibility for your future. You're never, there's never a magic moment in time where suddenly you can uh, avoid responsibility for your past or your present and then still claim power over your future. The more power you want over your future, the more responsibility you must accept for your present. This is what I found. Now, some people who have uh, attempted to walk the free man path come back with reports that they have failed and that it doesn't work. You will get tested. It's not a, a pass so much as it is come and test me. If when you test, if when they test you, your action is just a reaction to their stimuli instead of a proper thoughtful response, they know that you're not responsible and they will just kick you right back down essentially. Look at it to a certain degree, like you're dealing with a nanny. A nanny who is so used to dealing with completely irresponsible people who demand that she provide for them. Now here you're coming and saying, I'm going outside and uh, I don't need you anymore. Nanny's going to have a certain duty to ensure that you are in fact uh, capable and responsible. She's going to test you. And if you prove that you are, in fact, capable of a thoughtful response to the test that they bring, instead of simply reacting in a essentially a childish manner, uh, if you can do that, then they feel comfortable letting you go outside and play. And if you come back, if you, if you identify yourself that you're going outside not to go play, but because there's, there's adult work to do, who the hell are they to stop you? It all boils down to how your ability to respond to stimuli. If you can develop that so that when you are questioned or pushed or prodded, you do not respond with fear or anger or shame, but instead of making declarative statements, you can respond with an interrogatory, interrogatory, a question, and it's not just a stupid question. You can end up getting to a situation where these people who would otherwise try to stop you will in fact say, listen, if you want the responsibility, go ahead. But they do have a certain duty to stop those who are only capable of reaction and not of a proper thoughtful response. And the reason that is is because they've been taking care of you for so long. And if you stop now, if you say, I don't need you anymore, and you try to run away and you're like a kid leaving the house, they're going to stop you. But if you accept the responsibility and the liability for your own actions, then you start getting to a point where a thoughtful response means that uh, you're not someone they want to mess with. Essentially, what we're all trying to do is to... Re define our own realities and redefine what this new world order seems to have in store for us so that we're not living in a corporate run police state. In order for us to do that we cannot afford to engage in reaction. It is simply too easy to manipulate you if what you're doing is always reactionary. A response, an intelligent response, that's an entirely different story. If we learn the difference and we employ these, we'll win. Do this, we're no better than sheep.
Now, developing a response ability is fairly easy. I'd like to tell you, essentially, there's four things. Think, identify, core, find a question, ask a question. Tell you a little story. I was in court. There was this guy, Brian Lutz. Very intelligent man, Brian Lutz. Hi, Brian. He was being asked questions by the prosecutor, and his response for like four minutes And he wasn't just delaying. He was actively thinking every word. He was breaking down in his mind the definition, the assumption, the implication, every one. And he would identify within that question that he was asked, the core that the prosecutor was asking. He would then ask or find the question concerning how to clarify that core. He would then ask the question. The prosecutor didn't like it at all. He got real mad. Asked the judge, are you going to allow this? The judge was like, you're the one who brought him to court. You're asking him questions, the answers to which could land him in jail. I think he's being a very wise man taking his time to answer your questions, and he can take all the time he needs. That's the truth, too, especially in court, especially if you're dealing with people who are going to try to test you and to get you to react instead of respond. If you stop and you think about what their question is, and then you identify the core concern that their question is clearly um, uh, trying to address, even though they might not mention it, figure out what question will help you prove to them that you have identified that core and you're seeking the clarification of it. And then ask them a question. The fact that you have identified the core and that you are asking a question that does identify the core of the, the concern that they're coming at you with will to a large degree identify you as one who is capable of response. When I was keeping this uh, I, I was working for this after-hours club called Here on Earth, and I was talking to these three cops, and they were trying to, um, well, they were trying to poke me and see if I would react, and I was just properly responding the whole way. And the sergeant, he didn't like it, so he comes barreling up, and he's like, who's in charge here? And I thought about it for a moment. I identified the core. I looked at what the assumptions and the implications were, and I said to him, I said, well, with that question, we know it's not you. Now, at this point, all the little, all his officers, they started kind of laughing and chuckling. And he looks at him, gave him an angry look, and then he turns around. And I said, and since you're the one with the most stripes, we know it can't be any of them. Since it's after dark and uh, you're carrying guns and you haven't been called here as peace officers, don't you think you're trespassing? And it was by doing that that they saw that I was capable and that I had the ability to respond. Instead of just, ooh, who's in charge and answer his question? No, you don't just answer a question, nor do you make declaratory statements because they always lead to conflict. The goal is to always be asking questions. Now, developing a response ability is fairly easy. I'd like to tell you, essentially there's four things. Think, identify, core, find a question, ask a question. I'll tell you a little story. I was in court. There was this guy, Brian Lutz. Very intelligent man, Brian Lutz. Hi, Brian. He was being asked questions by the prosecutor. And his response for like four minutes And he wasn't just delaying, he was actively thinking every word. He was breaking down in his mind the definition, the assumption, the implication, every one. And he would identify within that question that he was asked, the core that the prosecutor was asking. He would then ask or find the question concerning how to clarify that core. 
you would then ask the question. The prosecutor didn't like it at all. He got real mad. Asked the judge, are you going to allow this? The judge was like, you're the one who brought him to court. You're asking him questions, the answers to which could land him in jail. I think he's being a very wise man taking his time to answer your questions, and he could take all the time he needs. <sighs> That's the truth, too, especially in court, especially if you're dealing with people who are going to try to test you and to get you to react instead of respond. If you stop and you think about what their question is, and then you identify the core concern that their question is clearly um, uh, trying to address, even though they might not mention it, figure out what question will help you prove to them that you have identified that core and you're seeking the clarification of it, and then ask them a question. The fact that you have identified the core and that you are asking a question that does identify the core of the, the concern that they're coming at you with will to a large degree identify you as one who is capable of response. When I was keeping this, uh, I, I was working for this after hours club called Here on Earth and I was talking to these three cops and they were trying to... Um, well, they were trying to poke me and see if I would react, and I was just properly responding the whole way. And the sergeant, he didn't like it, so he comes barreling up, and he's like, who's in charge here? And I thought about it for a moment. I identified the core. I looked at what the assumptions and the implications were, and I said to him, I said, well, with that question, we know it's not you. Now, at this point, all the little, all his officers, they started kind of laughing and chuckling. And he looks at him, gave him an angry look, and then he turns around. And I said, and since you're the one with the most stripes, we know it can't be any of them. Since it's after dark and uh, you're carrying guns and you haven't been called here as peace officers, don't you think you're trespassing? And it was by doing that that they saw that I was capable and that I had the ability to respond. Instead of just, ooh, who's in charge, and answer his question? No. You don't just answer a question, nor do you make declaratory statements because they always lead to conflict. The goal is to always be asking questions. Now remember, folks, when it comes to the whole wide world... Where's my pointy stick? comes to the world, the master asks the questions, and the servant answers the questions. And your goal is to be the master. You do this by asking questions. And that brings us to your assignment for this lesson, and we are going to call it the question game. Found my stick. The question game, you, this is why we were, uh, when we were doing the serving of the soup, uh, we were asking you to hook up with people. Uh, we now have a class uh, president. I don't know if I would call him president. He's volunteered to act as the communication hub. If, you're, if you have made friends with people here, uh, taking these lessons and in this class, then you should have some way to communicate them ideally via Skype, and you play the question game. You're going to be asking questions where you have to respond properly to the questions that are posed to you. You have to identify the core, find the question, then ask the question. And the goal is to do it as fast as possible. You've seen the theatrical games uh, where you're always asking the questions. Have you seen that? See, I just asked a question. You're going to be playing the question game so that you can develop in your mind that you are the master and therefore you're the one who asks the questions. And a servant who comes up to you and starts making demands upon you and asking questions, well, if you're truly the master, you're going to be asking them, hey pal, who the hell do you think you are? Now you have some very fun and very simple assignments this time. 
for this lesson, uh, I want you to play the question game. should have been making friends by now using Skype. You should be in communication with people who are in the class. Certainly by the time uh, our class president, uh, um, Mike Friesen, gets in contact with you all, uh, you will have all that information so you can talk to people, share your Skype information, uh, have some fun with this, videotape it. And uh, you're going to have to end up probably giving that to Mike or maybe he'll appoint an assistant uh, who will be collecting all of this. All of these assignments, trust me on this, it's going to be in your benefit to save this video, take some pictures, uh, be prepared to make a little report. So videotape it. Do your question game with each other. Videotape it. And the other thing I would like you to do is I want you to practice your ability to accept responsibility. Uh, essentially, if you see an old lady crossing the street, go help her. Do something where you are accepting. We live in a world where everyone seems to want to shift responsibility. Go out and do something completely opposite to that. Go accept responsibility where you are not expected to do so. You can also do this if you can't find an easy way to do that. One way you could do it is by uh, it's all the fault game, eh? the blame game. If there's somebody who has caused you fault, go forgive them. Accept responsibility for forgiveness. You can do that. Uh, and don't be surprised if when you do this, people look at you in a new light. You do it at work, you just might get a raise out of the deal. Certainly the universe will start to unfold in a manner where it will recognize that you do or you are capable of shouldering responsibility. So question game, have some fun with it. You just pick a question, make a fun question. Uh, you'll get points for creativeness of your question. If uh, we got 10, 10 or so groups together, groups of two or three, I guess you got to do it two at a time. Uh, but just have some fun, play the question game. And the goal is one person asks the other a question. And you have to respond, give yourself a time frame. I'd say start at 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds to come up with another question and bring it down until you're responding five questions, three seconds, right off the bat. And have some fun with it. It's a, it's a good way to get to know people and uh, it's, it's good to have with three people because you might find you need someone else watching to catch you when you respond in, with an answer instead of a question because I've, I've done it before where when we look back we realize holy mackerel we were both making responses there and you get, you, you get tripped into it and you don't even realize it so it's good to have a third party there watching you so, question game, videotape it, go out and accept some responsibility. Don't be surprised if the magic starts unfolding with that one. Uh, bear in mind, you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you do me a good service if you rate it, comment, share, and favorite. Do all of those things, it doesn't hurt you, click, click, click. Uh, if I'm breaking up these lessons, go back and do it to all of them, specifically the first one. It's easy just to do it on the last one you're watching this, go back to the first one do all of that. Actually, do it to all of them. It helps me too. Your comments help me become a better teacher. It helps me to, uh, uh, I don't know, it helps me. Do it. For those of you who wish, PayPal donations are graciously and gratefully accepted through MrMighty at Excite.com. Uh, you need a PayPal account, I guess. They're pretty cool. Put one up and uh, if you can afford it, if it's not going to take anything from your belly and you're appreciative of my efforts, feel free to make a, a small donation. Mr. Mighty. So rate, comment, share, and as always, have fun.